Intertwined. Destroy number seven. The, the last noose got tied around the eight-year-old girl's neck as she screamed and looked at her mother and father hopelessly, realizing her short life was coming to an end. Now I want you to reread that last sentence one more time, as that is the first sentence as well as the last sentence in this story. And then reread it. You want me to add yeah. that? The last noose got tied around the eight-year-old girl's neck as she screamed and looked at her mother and father hopelessly, realizing her short life was coming to an end. Is it just a loop, or am I done now? You're done now. Okay. <laughs> it is some time in the future past where we are now, but no one really knows, no one really knew the year. There weren't silver metallic spacecraft hovering around nor talking robots. If anything, it seemed like society fell back in time, especially at this rural town called Veracht. Is that how you pronounce that? Veracht. Veracht. Turner was out in the field collecting corn and various other crops. The corn wasn't tall, though. The type of corn the Warren family grew was called midget hybrid. It produced the same yield as normal corn coin coined in our lives. But the difference between the two was that theirs grew up to only about four feet high compared to the typical six or seven feet. You couldn't get lost in it, and there were no mazes to be made. The Warrant family had only about a six by eight foot plot area where they grew this crop anyway. The family of six grew various other fruits and vegetables as well, but we focused on the corn because that's where Turner was at when he needed help. But more importantly, that's where the neighboring home anchored next to the Warren household. Is anybody going to help, goddamn? yelled Turner, who had been waiting patiently, hoping someone would come to his aid. He thought to himself, at least someone must be free to come pick up the other side of the woven sack that lay full of corn. Anybody? Turner's back was starting to hurt as four of his upper vertebrae grinded on top of each other with pretty much no cartilage in between any of them. You could sometimes even hear them grind over each other if you got up too quick, or there was silence in the air. Long story short, short, his back fucking hurt, especially waiting for someone to come pick up the slack on a giant sack of freshly picked corn. The next move Turner made would ultimately cost him his life, and I'll let you decide how. Turner grew impatient of waiting and picked up the bag of corn of his own with pretty much all the might he had left in him on a Tuesday evening at three. His neighbor had heard his shouting and with the neighbor's house being anchored at the corner of the corn plot, came over to help. Just as the neighbor had popped around the fence and was in earshot to help Turner, it was already too late. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind said Turner peacefully as he lugged the sack over his shoulder and happily realized his back pain was not stopping him today. Turner turned slowly and naturally made eye contact with his neighbor as he was going to head towards the house. They both looked at each other with stone cold facial expressions. The neighbor overheard Turner say a Bible verse. Every nerve in Turner's back went from a warm throbbing pulse to ice. They both looked like they saw ghosts as they made unmovable eye contact for what seemed like hours, but was only about two seconds. Turner's neighbor managed to stutter out. D -d 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 Did you still need help, Turner? I could hear you from inside. Uh, uh, no, sir, no, not me. <laughs> I got it taken care of. My back did not fail me today, said Turner as he realized how bad he had just fucked up. I'm gonna go take care of this corn. You, you, you want a year or two? stuttered Turner. No, I'm fine. He was making us all tea steak tonight, so I have to save my appetite, said Turner's neighbor as his hand hesitantly rubbed his belly. His index finger got caught through the spacious gap in between the buttons of his shirt. All right, said Turner. I'll be seeing you later. The two walked away from each other, immediately going to their wives to share about what the fuck just happened. I do warn you, the remainder of this story is quite gruesome and explicit, but if you want to know what happens, I guess you have to keep reading. <laughs> 36 hours went by. Boom, boom, boom. 
Turner's door got kicked in hard. The handle on it dented the wall. Immediately, children were screaming as grown adults rushed into Turner's home. Turner's oldest kid of 16 ran past a half-packed suitcase towards the noise of the front door getting kicked in. It was dark outside and the middle of the night was making it hard to see what was going on. Immediately, the butt of a 12-gauge shotgun smashed his nose, causing blood and tears to drop the 16-year-old to the floor. Blood filled his mouth as he reached to hold his now bro throbbing, broken nose. A big, heavy boot stomped on the hand of the 16-year-old as another man marched past, causing the hand to shatter instantly. Come on, you sick fuckheads, screamed voices of a giant mob as they ran through every room, snatching the rest of the family out of their beds. The children were dragged by the skin on their elbows, with their body bruising instantly as the angry mob squeezed the life out of them. Turner's wife got punched in the face so hard you could hear it rock from her outside. This knocked her out instantly, giving her severe whiplash and neck vertebrae damage as her family, as, or as her head dangled above her limp shoulders. Men drug her outside in the cold with the rest of the family. An iron bat was taken to Turner's knees, bending them forever inwards. You sick fucking idiot, do you not know anything? Chanted a man. Religion kills people, you piece of fucking shit. Right as the tea and shit came out of of another man's mouth, the baseball bat connected with Turner's collarbone, instantly shattering it like a fragile wine glass. It has for years. Do you know how many people have died because of it, Turner? Screamed the same man with the bat as another strike broke the head of Turner's humerus, rending, rending his right whole arm limp. Oh, Jesus. The idea doesn't work, and it destroyed the lives of everyone. Do you not like gay people, you fucking fag? Am I not good enough for you? Screamed the man again, this time with the bat being swung perpendicularly to Turner's face, straight along his cheekbone and mouth. You could see Turner's teeth fly out like ice chips, and that was the final blow that made Turner pass out from his own adrenaline. It all happened so quick. We tell you people time and time again the dangers of religion and not following the free will of man. It always ends bad for everyone, said a now higher up authority as they wrapped a rope around Turner's neck. They grabbed onto his bloody hair and tried to shake him awake to eye level, but Turner didn't wake up and was probably dead already from the metal, from the metal baseball bat crushing his skull. Everyone thinks they are right and will kill to prove it. Look at World War II, look at views on sexuality, look at the color of someone's skin and how it can be defined as worse or better than another person, said the same man wrapping the necks with the rope of the next five family members. The rope had been used for crab pots and there was no way the seawater made the thick, dry to the bone rope any more comfortable. Tiny pieces of the twined together rope stuck out of its interwoven pattern like jagged bat fangs. It always ends terribly, and a minority is always made, said the same figure as he pulled out Turner's Bible that was brought from their house. History will not rewrite itself in this city, and for that, I am sorry. The last noose got tied around the eight-year-old girl's neck as she screamed and looked at her mother and father hopelessly as she realized her short life was coming to an end. <clears throat> I'm actually... That story might be my proudest work, besides the final story. But, like, if you think I'm anti-religion from that story Hunter just read out loud, you, like, honestly restart this whole thing over, because that... I'm not anti-religious. I'm pretty sure I actually believe in God. But that, that's a different thing. That's I, I support religion, actually. I really fucking do. I, I like... Yeah, no, it's... I am not anti-religious whatsoever. The purpose of this story is to honestly inverse history up to everything that you guys have ever learned or heard about. In my life... <clears throat> The way I view humans is I go, okay, everybody comes out of a vagina or an egg or an incubation chamber, whatever. <laughs> everybody, everybody is made the same way. So that means everybody's created equally. 
That means everybody is created equally, no matter sexuality, no matter gender, no matter uh, the color of your skin, no matter what you believe in. Everybody is created equally, literally everybody. But there's still so many people that are racist and think that just because they're white or just because they're black, they think they are better than a different race. And there's still, there's still like, for the most part, like every like gay person I've like ever talked to, they've always had moments in their life where they were like afraid of what society would think about them. And just like all that, like building in me throughout the years and just like uh, some people thinking they're better and more holy than others because they believe in a religion. All of that just building in me for years and me just like viewing all this crazy shit happening with just like, you know, like normal ass people, like not dictators and crazy, just normal ass people like, oh my God, like that person's gay. Like, no, 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 that person's gay. Fuck that person. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've done podcasts with people that have been like, bro, this shit's so fucked. Like, why am I treated different? You know what I mean? So like, just all that shit just gets pinned up in me. And then, you know, and then I, I give you a, a couple examples, like the World War II thing, like, uh, like what, like Hitler, Hitler like killed millions or like more than millions, probably tens of millions, correct me if I'm wrong, of, uh, of like Jewish people because they were Jewish. Uh, which is honestly crazy because like, like, yeah, I don't think you should kill someone because they believe in some sort of religion or like look differently. So I said, dude, I'm going to write a fucking story in bursting that whole thing. So when the main character, the main father, uh, Turner or whatever, I think that's what his name is. He's like out like harvesting his corn and shit. Like like he's a hard worker. Like I, I'm, he has no cartilage left between the vertebrae and his back and fucking, like, he's just out there just like needs help about to lift something up. And then he, I don't know if you caught it, but probably really hard to catch unless you like study the Bible. But I put a Bible verse in there before, it might've been before or after he like lifts up the big bag of corn. And that, like, in one way or another, that kind of leads to the climax. It's, he did, he gives the Bible verse, and he did, he said it aloud, but peacefully. He said it out loud, gets the corn up, big ass sack of corn, weighs probably 70 pounds. Turner didn't know his neighbor heard him say the fucking Bible verse, so Turner's like, oh, fuck, like, like, you know what I mean? And we'll, I'll, I'll explain in a second, but Turner realizes his neighbor heard the Bible verse. So he goes inside like 36 hours later, all these people come to the house. They fuck up the whole family. They're like hanging them um, and like beating them senseless. And they're going to kill off the entire family. And notice that I included when they go, when they beat down the door, there's like suitcases being packed up. Like Turner's like packing up the family and he's about to dip the fuck out, but it's too late. Like the, 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 the neighbors are, the neighbors in the town, they, they already got to them. And so yeah, the Turner family, they were trying to escape. Um, and the reasoning is, is because Turner knew that deep down the neighbor heard him out loud say that Bible verse. And you're probably wondering, okay, laser, why the fuck's that even matter? Well, in this story, in this, in this uh, part of uh, that someone else's different reality, you actually get in trouble for being religious because these religious people, they don't think everybody's created equally and they think that um, if you're gay, you're going to hell. And, and I'm not just picking out one religion in particular. I'm just saying overall, there are religions on this planet that do, um, if you're gay, you're going to hell. And if you're black, you're like, you're not the equivalent of like a white person or some shit. So I said, okay, instead of that dominating all throughout history, let's do it the other way to where if you do practice that shit, you're then get your ass beaten down. You're then to have a 12 gauge fucking butt of a gun, break your nose. Like you're going to be hung. You're then <clears throat> you're going to get hung in the middle of the town, like in front of every, like you're, 
You're getting dragged out of your fucking house in the middle of the night beaten senseless because you're practicing religion and you don't think gay people are created the same and you're against like black people and shit. Like that that was the story I just kind of uh Instead of religion, instead of the good people always being religious and like thinking that they're right and like killing Jewish people and like saying fuck black people, oh, you're homosexual, you're not even on our equal playing field. Instead of that dominating all throughout history, flip it around to where if you do practice religion and you're going to openly be saying Bible verses, you're then get hung the next day. So that, that's where this story came from. And it, it's just because of all the shit that I said at the beginning with like, it is in some people's religion, gay people are not the same as fucking straight people, which I think is bullshit because everybody's created equally. That's Wait, it. So either way, it's horrible. Is that what? <laughs> We're done talking. <laughs> <laughs> We're done talking. <laughs> 